So th thank you very much, uh, uh, David and Philippe, for inviting me to give this lecture and for being very tenacious in keeping inviting me to give this lecture. And uh, uh, there, is a, there is a story that says that uh, uh, British speakers like to start with a joke and uh, Japanese speakers like to start with an apology. And uh, Italian speakers usually start by saying, Sarò breve, I shall be brief. <laughs> and then you know they will not. And that's exactly what <laughs> is going to happen to me. <clears throat> so brace yourselves. Uh, this is a, a, a rich book which took us uh, 10 years to write. And uh, uh, even if you disagree with everything we, we say in terms of interpretation, there are so many data that you will find something uh, uh, from it, <coughs> to gain from it. So, uh, now if you want to understand, uh, if you want to investigate extremists, in particular, in this case, Islamic extremists, you will find very many obstacles. Um, <coughs> they are uh, difficult to approach. Uh, they, of, they often die young or they end up in jail and uh, authorities don't allow you to have contact with them. If you finally get to them, they won't necessarily tell you what they think. They may be strategic in, in various ways, and there are very, very few of them. And this is true of extremists of all kinds, uh, and also uh, an old uh, technique, which is uh, stepping in, in other people's boots, is particularly difficult precisely because they are extremists. And uh, unless you are one of them, it may be difficult to read them through introspection. So the issue is, how do we get any, to know anything about them? <clears throat> this was, uh, is the general premise of, of this book. So we, we go through three or four uh, big questions that you may want to ask uh, in general terms. The most obvious one is, under what condition people become extremists? And here there are several theories. Uh, can you hear me okay? Okay. No? Eh? Um, there are several theories uh, running around. <coughs> One is uh, poverty, the other is social exclusion, the other is humiliation, uh, another is the importance of, uh, stresses the importance of network, uh, others stress the importance of uh, recruitment uh, from the uh, extremist group, and so on. <coughs> and uh, so big question, big theories being run, running around. <coughs> Another question which is there, it's a big, it's indeed a, a big question, is are we dealing with people who are tabula rasa? <clears throat> are we dealing with individuals, as I often heard over these years, that are just like you and me? They may be a little bit more like you. Uh, <laughs> that could become <laughs> extremists uh, given the right condition, the wrong condition, if you want to put it this way. Uh, uh, this way, or are we are we dealing with uh, thick personalities and, and a heterogeneity of personality, which may be uh, more or less susceptible to the lure of extremism? <clears throat> and finally, uh, an important question, especially in political psychology, is: Do people who embrace different ideologies reflect? Uh, are they different themselves? I mean, or, or it's just a matter of uh, whom you meet and whom you go out, whom you go to school, where you live, how rich you are, and so on, which ideology you end up embracing. So it's a similar question. But the, the, the difference is that in one case you may find that there is a type of individual that becomes an extremist, come what may. In the other you find that there are types that become extremists in one direction and not another. <clears throat> When you start with questions as large as this, you don't know where to start. And uh, if you have the obstacles I mentioned before of having access to uh, extremists, one thing you can do is uh, um, uh, the following. You can start from an anomaly, from something that doesn't add up, that's something that surprises you, uh, 
uh, and uh, defies your theories, whether scholarly theories or commonsensical theories. So instead of asking, why do people commit suicide and start making a, a long list of topics, you can narrow down and say, why do Protestant, at the times of Durkheim at least, commit suicide more often uh, than Catholic or Jews? That's a puzzle. Hmm? That's, a, that's narrowing down uh, what, you, uh, what you are asking. And so in this case, we use this puzzle. <clears throat> Uh, why are so many engineers among violent uh, Islamists? And they say that people leave Oxford like I did because of two things. One is high table and the other is low salaries. Now, I, I say nothing about the latter, but uh, I didn't leave because of high table. In fact, uh, I first heard about this anomaly, or what seemed to me uh, to be an anomaly, in 1992 in Oxford at High Table, where I met uh, an Egyptian woman. In 92, Islamic fundamentalism was at, at the dawn, at least of the consciousness of, uh, of, uh, of Western, of people in the West. <clears throat> she said, we were talking about, I was asking her uh, about them, and she said, ah, perhaps you don't know that uh, the, the core of Islamic uh, radicals in, in Cairo is in the engineering faculty. So that, but, but you didn't expect that people trained technically, uh, they may go both violent and religious at the, at the same time. That was a very unexpected. So I kept that in my mind for, uh, for many years. I, I set uh, some of my students to do preliminary research. In the end, I met Stefan, who speaks uh, or knows Arabic uh, well enough. He's a specialist of Saudi Arabia. And we joined forces, and we were for a long time uh, on this book. <clears throat> uh, we use education as a workhorse, um, and we use level and type of education. <clears throat> the beauty of using education is that it reflects a behavior, your choices of uh, going to, to school and for how long and doing what. It's, easily observable, even for Islamic extremists, it's an information which you can find relatively easily in their uh, biographies. It's not considered to be a secret, it's not considered to be uh, security sensitive, so it's released. And unlike age or date of birth, um, place of birth and social class and so on, is the result of, of a choice. It's comparable in the sense that more or less we can compare the same type of uh, education across countries, and is universal. Everybody has some education at some point. Uh, especially the discipline of uh, degree is a, a near free choice, in the sense that if you have the uh, resources and the motivation to go to university, there are certain degrees, the rewards of which are very similar to each other, so there is no uh, payoff that allows you to, to distinguish between them. So you, the choice between, say, law, economics, medicine, science, and engineering is a choice that could reflect dispositions. Um, why did it take us so long? Mostly because we collected an enormous quantity of data. Uh, we collected uh, let me go uh, quickly through, through this. We collected data on uh, extremists in Muslim countries, in Western countries, on non-violent Islamists, on Islamists who defected. Then we collected uh, educational data on lots of other extremists, both before the Second World War and after the Second World War, to, to draw a comparison. Those of you who wish can access publicly the data set, we created a website and you can download them uh, for free. You receive the bill at home later. Uh, <clears throat> so what did we, what did we um, find first? Um, this is about uh, 
500 people for about 350 we find, found educational information. <clears throat> I, I won't give you a methodological details, otherwise we are dead, but you're most welcome. We are, we are, we, I will never end. I will be brief. Um, so, <clears throat> but you're most welcome to ask them. So what we found that in the uh, sample, <clears throat> almost half have I call graduates for sure, but are people who are either a degree or went to university for some years. And this is five times what we would expect if we judge by the uh, frequency of graduates in the population of the relevant countries. We have 21 countries and 17 groups uh, in the sample. Engineers are uh, 44, 0.9% of the graduates uh, in the sample. <clears throat> Let me show you uh, uh, the, di sorry, the distribution. Just to clarify, this is just the extremists. Just extremists, yes. And by extremists we mean people who have been members of groups that uh, espoused violence as a uh, legitimate mean to, for political ends. Um, <clears throat> so you can see that quite a lot come from Islamic studies, as you might, might expect, right? Uh, but then the, the lion's share it comes from engineers. Mm. If you put together the elite degrees, engineering, medicine, science, and economics, you have six, almost 65%. Of, of the membership of our convenient sample. Uh, <clears throat> so, mm, let me just. Also, this figure is uh, many times higher than the population of Yes, it's five times. The overall, but the uh, the, uh, now now I, I'll, I'll show you that. It's 17 times relative to the male population and six times relative to other graduates. Uh, <clears throat> let me show you the, uh, the other graduates. The, these are the odd ratios uh, of being in, the, in our sample relative to being in the population. And uh, medicine and engineering are overrepresented, whereas humanities and science itself, throughout this work, we always found that science and maths differ from engineering, whereas they, are, they were bundled before often in this type of literature. And uh, so this is the, uh, the humanities are underrepresented, science is underrepresented, and these are overrepresented. <coughs> Um, so the first thing that we conclude is that this is the, as far as we know, is the first uh, wide data demonstration that the Islamist movement emerged from would-be elites, did not emerge from poverty or destitution or exclusion. Hmm? This is the core of uh, anybody who came to the attention of the authorities one way or the other, or in, in some way we combing everything that we could possibly comb, uh, we got information on. They were active from the late 70s to uh, the early uh, 2000, this group. Um, so the next question is why? <clears throat> Those of you who are statistically inclined <laughs> may say, well, um, are you sure that this is not a fluke? That is, are you sure that there wasn't, for instance, one en engineer who became uh, Islamist in Cairo in 1978, and then he started recruiting among his friends? Because when you are doing something underground, something secretive, something which is repressed, the risk uh, that you are caught uh, is um, avoided by moving underground, by recruiting people you know, friends, people you trust, and so on. And these are more likely to be among your, your lot, right? So this would 
could be uh, an explanation. <coughs> so country and group. So you may have a peak uh, in, in one place and then everything else would be uh, fairly uh, evenly distributed uh, with respect to, to the graduates and the population. The answer is no, that's not the case because uh, amazingly enough, the overrepresentation of both graduates and especially of engineers is very evenly distributed across countries from Southeast Asia to uh, Morocco. Uh, and the overrepresentation occurs everywhere, virtually everywhere. Uh, so th this means that it couldn't have been a network effect. Um, so, uh, a re reasoning in, in these terms allows you to also screen out uh, theories. For the, there was a period, thanks to uh, uh, a good book by Sageman, that made network explanation of, of these uh, of the profile of extremists, or who ends up as an extremist, the explanation. And this, this seems to rule it out, at least cannot be the overall uh, explanation. The other thing that, as soon as I mention this to anybody, what are you working on, this, 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 you know, this uh, terrifying question you get asked uh, very often, my answer, was, ah, I'm doing this and that on engineers and so on. And the, the, uh, well, and it's obvious. I mean, they do bombs. So, you know, that's why, <laughs> that's why they're there, right? So why, what, what's the matter with you? Why are you wasting time, you know? Uh, um, so, plausible. Plausible that skills uh, matter. So people would be selecting or self-selecting on their skills. Um, <coughs> um, and so one thing we did, uh, sweating quite a lot, was to extract from our sources the role of people with a degree or with university exposure had or have in the group they, to which uh, they belong. <coughs> and we, we tried to see whether the engineers were particularly active in uh, activities which to uh, the naive mind may require engineering abilities. And this is what we saw. I don't know whether you can see. It. It's, it's, it's a bit mm, out of focus at the bottom, this. I don't know why. <coughs> but uh, bomb makers, uh, red and green, are the two activities that are of interest. And if you look here, you can see that the graduates are mostly leaders. Hmm? This is the gray one, or blue, or founders, lots of, these are proportion. And the, incidentally, they are roles, they are not people. There are f uh, f people who covered more than one role. Um, and <coughs> so the, the elite uh, of graduates in our sample were le leaders in very large pro proportion of, found, of founders, especially doctors and uh, business and economies, proportionally speaking. So <clears throat> you may take some pride in that, <laughs> David. <laughs> and uh, engineers don't particularly stick out uh, as being there uh, with, with these roles. So this is uh, an indication that it, it doesn't seem likely that they are there because, because of their reason. There, are lots of, uh, there is lots of other evidence that uh, that this is the case. We never found in any manual, any, any source, direct source of jihadists, we never found any, anybody saying we want to recruit people who are technically uh, versed. They refer to other features, to features of characters, not of features of, 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 of uh, technique. <clears throat> um, also, lots of groups have been able to caused tremendous havoc uh, in bombing and otherwise without any engineer at all. In, uh, often bomb makers is one person over a, a, 
a wide range of uh, militants and often is maybe an ex-mechanic or ex-military with practical experience. We, <coughs> we collected also six or seven cases in which an engineer did an attack, uh, creating the means for the attack, in, including bombs, which failed. So uh, there, 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 is, there is an interesting page in the book that gives you a, a list of it, which probably says that they believe what you believe before I spoke, namely that engineers are good at making bombs. So they tried and they, they failed. <clears throat> so this doesn't seem to be the driving uh, uh, mechanism. What we, <clears throat> what we worked on quite a lot, there is an entire chapter which is about the history of the Middle East from the 1950 to the uh, late uh, 90s. And, uh, in that chapter, we explore the possibility that we, are, that we are talking about relative deprivation. And there are very specific historical reasons because of, of that. Is that the, imagine Nasser in the 1950s <coughs> uh, as the archetypal autocrats post-war. He was very keen on modernizing Egypt. They invested a lot of money in education, especially technical education, and made it look as if the, to receive a technical education was the uh, proper career path for bright uh, pro-social um, young, young men. Often in engineering is virtually only men everywhere in the world. Uh, <clears throat> so there, were, there was in the Middle East a, a very strong uh, expectation that one would contribute, not necessarily an expectation of self-interest. You know, I'll get a profession, I'll get a job, I'll become rich. There was also an expectation of being useful to your nation, to the build-up of the nation. There was the rhetoric. Hmm? Uh, and this attracted a high family investment. People and families invested a lot in, 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 uh, in the, the studies. And one thing which is uh, we, find, uh, we found meritocratic in, in, uh, in many Middle Eastern countries is uh, uh, university selection. It's people were really chosen on merit to do elite degrees. Uh, then, uh, here I'm telling you a, a big, rich story in three words, but uh, look at these. Uh, that it, it was the end of the uh, of the 70s, here we made one, the GDP per capita of Middle Eastern and North African countries and low and mid income countries everywhere in the world. Hmm? As you can see from this moment on, the GDP per capita barely grew up to 2009 in Middle Eastern countries. So the growth, which had been very uh, buoyant uh, before the, in the 50s and 60s stopped growing. And it's at the same time that uh, we begin to see the emergence of um, of, of uh, Islamists. And um, I mean, and, and there are very, very good description, description of, of uh, what has been going on in, uh, in the Middle East there, which match very well <coughs> with the possibility that we are looking at relative deprivation. Relative deprivation, for those of you who, who don't know, uh, is the theory whereby uh, the, the, the motivation to rebel is due to uh, a friction between what you expect and what you find out you are getting. Mm -hmm. Especially if expectations are high and what you're getting is low, and the expectation and what you get are very close in, in, in temporal terms. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, leads to rebellion. It's a theory that, that uh, uh, is very interesting and uh, has not been used very much and has been used mostly to explain differences between countries and difference in one country over time. We use it in a, in a new way. We use it to uh, explain the, the educational profile within the rebels. Hmm? Uh, <clears throat> we have other evidence that um, 
its block, which is compatible with uh, relative deprivation. For instance, in uh, Indonesia, in India, in Singapore, the, the rate of graduates uh, among extremists is half what you get in, in the Middle East. And these were countries that developed uh, more. They didn't have that, that flat uh, line I show. And, <coughs> and then there is the interesting Saudi exception, about which uh, Stefan uh, knows a lot. Um, which is the only Middle Eastern country in which there has been a shortage of engineers uh, for a very long time. And in fact, uh, we find uh, out of a sample of 10 graduates coming from Saudi Arabia, only one engineer. Out of another sample uh, collected by the Americans in Iraq of volunteers, 14 uh, Saudi with a degree, zero engineer. Another sample collected by Thomas Egammer, one engineer again out of 12. So it is uh, an interesting exception, which in a sense tells you a simple story, namely that being uh, galled and irked uh, by the fact that the promises have not been kept uh, pushes you uh, to rebellion. And, and if by contrast, you have vast opportunities. Saudi Arabia imported engineers, even. Uh, that's a, a necessary condition that is not there. Um, then we said, OK, if it's uh, <coughs> a relative deprivation that does most of the footwork here. It should be the case that, as we saw for the uh, South Asian countries, also in the West, extremists who grew up in the West, we should find fewer graduates among them because they had more opportunities. We should also find fewer engineers among them because engineers would have more opportunities. So if it's a matter of opportunities, of labor market, of promises kept or not, then that's so we embarked on <coughs> collecting this other sample of about 350 people, which uh, up to a, when we stopped, where more or less uh, everybody who had been <coughs> killed, arrested, or identified by the by the West. <clears throat> and uh, what did we find? First, uh, we find that, yes, uh, the percentage of graduates um, in, uh, among the, in the group um, is lower. It's about half of what you get in uh, Islamic countries. <coughs> it's even lower than it looks because um, the, uh, the ratio of people with an engineering degree is higher in, in the West than it is in the Middle East. Mm. So here, here is about 18%. In the Middle East, it was about 12%. So the same percentage of engineer looks uh, only half, but in fact is uh, even smaller than, uh, of graduates is smaller than that. What about graduates then? <clears throat> Look at this. This didn't work. I put below what you saw before. Mm? This is the mini version of what you saw before. And what we got in the uh, Western sample is just the, sa is the same structure. Right? There are no Isla Islam uh, Islamic uh, scholar, uh, which is um, probably what explain art and humanities and social. But the important thing is this. There is an a overrepresentation, vast overrepresentation of engineers, even in the West. This notice that we are talking about completely different countries, completely different periods. Hmm? Andrea. No, this is only Islamist. Only, only Islamist. I'm only talking about Islamist now. <coughs> uh, and these were uh, captured or killed or, or arrested or came in under the, the 
the radar of the authorities in all Western countries. <clears throat> Incidentally, if you, if you look in, in terms of, you, you see that there was a, a difference in terms of the graduate proportion. In terms of engineer, there isn't such a difference. They're just there everywhere. This is the most striking thing, not, right? So even in the West, you get uh, that proportion. A significant proportion, ne nearly half. <clears throat> um, now I want to take a further step. So the the, the thing is, I mean, le le let me conclude on this. Uh, it means that to explain a puzzle, relative deprivation isn't enough. There is something else going on here mm? because. Uh, of what I just showed you. So it goes some way towards explaining it and it works for, uh, as a whole to explain the f lower frequency of graduate among Islamists in the West, but it doesn't explain the, high, the same high frequency of engineers among the graduates in the West. One thing that I ought to say though is that generally the um, we can discuss this later, but the occupational educational quality of the Islamists who were born and raised in the West is lower than that uh, in the Middle East or the Muslim country generally. But let me do something else. If you think about it, relative deprivation is, uh, um, is like an old sock. You can pull it and stretch it and you can explain a lot of stuff with it. In fact, recently, there was a paper <coughs> that explains the uh, Arab Spring in, in, in the same way. And if you think about it, it's not something that tells you anything about how people rebel. It just gives you an idea that there is a tension in society that leads them to rebel, so they may be uh, rebelling peacefully, they may be rebelling uh, uh, in a secular way, they may be rebelling on the right, they may be rebelling on the left. It, it says nothing about that. So it's very, uh, how can I say, generic in, in, in its prediction. So we tried, we did something else. Um, we, um, we tried to see whether engineers should any, any uh, proclivity which would not be predicted by relative deprivation, right? In which, a priori, you expect people on any degree to have to the same extent. So if there is no proclivity to violence, uh, any, on average, every type of degree should be the same. Uh, the same for the other um, <clears throat> pairs that you, you see there. So what did we collected uh, an awful lot of data on Islamists who are peaceful, who belong to peaceful movement, over 500 of those from uh, an assortment of uh, groups and places all over, all over the Middle East. And what we found is this, <coughs> namely, uh, this is a summary of what, what we found. So uh, if you look at engineers, peaceful and violent at the same time, you see that the, uh, the violent are many more among the engineers than the non-violent. And the opposite is true of all other uh, elite, elite degree. <coughs> true, these samples are not uh, fantastic from, you know, you wouldn't teach a statistic class except for deprived uh, students for, with that. But <coughs> this is what we found. So we found, in other words, that there is a, also among the Islamists who are peaceful, there is a very high proportion of elite degrees just as among the violent uh, Islamists. But the, compos the internal composition is such the engineers uh, um, dominate the violent and do not dominate the non-violent. <clears throat> what about religious versus secular? This was interesting because we had to search for places in which 
if you say, mm, I want to rebel, but which way should I go? This way or that way? And we found three or four places where we could do that. And uh, the uh, archetype of which is to compare Hamas and Fatah. Hmm? Hamas is a, a religious organization and Fatah is a secular organization. And this is the frequency of uh, degrees among graduates that we found uh, in one organization and, and, <coughs> and the other. In fact, I forgot to list these among the data that we collected as well. Uh, so you can see that Islamic studies and engineering, Islamic studies is virtually present only in Hamas, and engineering is massively more present in Hamas than it is in Fatah. And we found also evidence from Afghanistan and from Iran before the 1979 revolution, suggesting that uh, engineers have a bias towards um, joining, joining or founding uh, re religiously, uh, religious movements or uh, to rebel under, under that. Um, what about the factors versus uh, you know, people who resist stalwarts. Uh, <clears throat> Here we, we got a very small sample uh, of people who defected from uh, I Islamist uh, groups. And uh, we looked at, um, this is the Muslim world extremist, the first sample uh, which I talked about, and this is the other defectors, right? So you can see that uh, the social sciences are much more likely to defect than to join. So yeah, we are cowards, in case you didn't know. Whereas engineers stick. Hmm? Not Islamic studies. Eh? But not Islamic studies. Islamic study uh, is, uh, this is so tiny, the number that uh, probably if we, if we redid this job again, we could probably treble this because many more people have defected in the meantime. So maybe we could do a better job and we could get this significant. But so far, these are the two. So humanities and social sciences are more inclined to defect relative to their uh, presence in the sample and engineers are less uh, likely to defect. So these are people who believe in that. I, incidentally, uh, if we have time, I'll show you an interesting chart that shows that uh, among the early Nazi, the proportion of engineers was higher uh, relative to the other profession. Then the other profession, especially lawyers, joined later. They were the march violet. I'll show you. I, I have a, 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 a nice slide. So these are people who believe in what they do. <coughs> Uh, so, summing up, um, engineers are overrepresented in many contexts and many groups. This is important. Partly, we argue because of uh, uh, relative deprivation experience, but um, uh, they still are overrepresented even if condition of frustrated aspiration are not there, as in the West or in Southeast A or in South Asia. And then we saw that engineers seem, seem, I say seem because we have such small numbers, but taken together they give an interesting picture. I prefer to join violent rather than peaceful group, religious rather than secular, and appear more committed to the cause. So, the, I'm, I'm telling you as if uh, when we did this we knew the end. But we didn't. You know, it was tr truly, a, 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 we went step by step because we didn't know what we were going to find. So at this point in our research, we began to wonder whether the education was, in a sense, a proxy for uh, character traits, for personality traits, for something that people have, something in the profile. In, in here, we are fighting against, first of all, our own profession, because as social scientists, we would like to find social uh, causes. Uh, we are fighting also with lots of the evidence on suicide attackers that found that nobody seems to be particularly a psychopath. But there are other traits. There, are, there is a family of things that people can 
have or not have or having greater or lesser measures. So be, we began to wonder. Since, since the, this uh, overrepresentation occurs in different times, different contexts, uh, different countries, different groups, it's very hard to think of an alternative explanation, like an institution or social explanation that could uh, travel across so many instances. So, malgré nous, we started to think, <coughs> well, what are we looking at? Um, now, the next step we did was, okay, let's look at what happens to engineers among other extremists. Uh, you can say, are engineers attracting only to Islamism? Is this a, 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 a fatal attraction between engineer and Islam that we, we don't find anywhere else? If it's a totally idiosyncratic, we shouldn't find engineers elsewhere. By contrast, if you go at the opposite extreme and you say, well, um, <clears throat> maybe there is a small, we're talking about a small proportion, I say engineers, but you should think about tiny numbers. Five times, six times more than other graduates, but still tiny numbers. <clears throat> well, suppose there is a tiny number of, of people who are really risk-taking, zealot, determined, to become extremists, then we should find their presence everywhere. Hmm? <clears throat> and then finally, the last question is, well, what if they were attracted only to groups that share the same ideology of Islamism, or, or share many traits of this ideology? The reason why we ask this question is a very precise reason, and is that one of the core claims of political psychology is that people lean in one direction or another politically, not through uh, random uh, events, but because different ideologies cater differently to their emotional and cognitive needs. They base these on attitude, on surveys of attitudes, mostly, big, big numbers. The, the paper by Jost and his colleagues uh, from the early 2000s is a meta-study, <coughs> which shows that uh, there is a clear demarcation of traits. Later I may tell you what these traits are between right uh, and left uh, preference, between conservative and liberals mostly based in, in the United States. In our case, it's interesting because we can try to see whether this is not just true of middle of the road, right and left, but it's true of extremists, and whether uh, it is um, based on behavior rather than attitude, because school and, uh, and joining extremism are behavior, they're not attitude. You, you, you do things, and in one case, you risk. Seriously. So we, here I'm just giving you <coughs> the, the um, ah, no. First of all, so the, the question is: Okay, if you want to, if we want to make a prediction about um, the last, you know, about these, only to groups that share ideology with Islam, then we said, well, we have to figure out whether the Islamists share ideology with anyone. Mm? So if you, if you take off the religious veil, mm, what remains of the belief that they have? So using uh, naive uh, uh, friends who didn't know what we were up to, we constructed uh, this, this table, which is a list of what uh, most Islamist groups believe. So uh, let me give you a, a sample. Probably you can't read that far unless you have a binocular. Eh? Can you read? Anyway, uh, and then, so we made this list, and then we, we ticked those that sh are shared on the right and those that are shared on the left, and we put a cross if they are not shared. So we have traditionalism, 
uh, including women's subordination, corporatist organic view of society, a hierarchical view of social order, acceptance of social inequality, antisemitism, uh, restoration of a lost order, nostalgia of a mythical past. This is very important for reactionaries of all strife. All these uh, <coughs> are shared only with the right. Then there is a, a group that is shared with both, like a monocausal view of origins and solution of social problems. This, this is the nice name of simplism. Ni uh, uh, Seymour Lips Lipset coined this, this term. It means, uh, which, you know, having met a few extremists in, in my uh, youth, uh, this was the thing that struck me most. That is that they may have a very high IQ, but they are uh, intellectually challenged when it comes to social understanding of social causality, right? Um, Anyway, monocausal view, right and, and left, uh, rigid division of the world into opposing camps, right and left, violence uh, is a legitimate means, both rejection of Western cultural imperialism, partly both, a lifestyle highly regulated by routines, especially among uh, Salafis. And this is more in Salafi groups, but not so much <coughs> on the left. Left is a scruffy. Uh, okay, so on the basis of, if we are right uh, in doing this job, in, in, in the outcome of this job, then we should expect to find that if the idea that the ideology matters in selecting people, we should find engineers only on the right and not on the left. Hmm? That's what, is that clear to, uh, to everybody? So, uh, we... <coughs> collected all those groups, and if you want, I can give you the breakdown for each group, and you can find, find them on in, in uh, our website. But this is the, uh, the summary. Hmm? So here we, put, we sum up all the militants and all their degrees for all the groups that we collected. So it's everyone. Uh, and again, we look at the distribution. So left wing, <coughs> the frequency of social and psychological sciences is around 23%, arts and humanities about 25%, maths and science is about 15%. Whereas they are not more than 10% when you look at right wing groups. Whereas law, engineering and interestingly history are more likely to be on the right than on the left. So, <coughs> let me just show you the other one. Leftists and Islamists. Hmm? Pretty much the same picture. Art, humanity, social scientists, virtually is, uh, none among in the Muslim world, and uh, engineering only in the Muslim world, and very, very few among the leftists. Um, but history and law are in a different country. History, history and law are, 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 are uh, slightly different. History, history we, we, eh? history. Historian, historians also have uh, a tendency to, to you know, look towards the past. They have a, a, a reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in there, in, not just for research. <laughs> Um, so, sorry, these data apply to your sample or to students in general? Let me interject this way. You should really plan a speech for about a month, another 10 minutes before we open up. I will, yeah, I, I'm pretty close to the end. Um, sorry. We should also have questions for those 10 minutes. No, but it, it's, it, your is a clarification. These are uh, all the left right and Islamist group put together, all the samples that we have. So, uh, Red Brigade, uh, uh, RAF, Rotarme Fraction. Um, we also put the, 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 those before the, the First World War. We just put all militants of the left degrees, all militants of the right, and all militants of, of Islamists 
in, uh, in combat and, and looked at how uh, the frequency of degrees in each of these big sets. Is that, is that? Hmm? So anyway, so the, <coughs> so we find that engineers join Islamist and far right by to avoid far left. The, the, the opposite is that graduates in humanities and social sciences join far left but avoid far right and Islamist groups. The beauty of this story is that these patterns apply equally across countries and times. So you find the same pattern in Japan, Latin America uh, for the left, or uh, Russia, United States, uh, uh, 1920s Italy, uh, 1990s uh, Germany and Austria. You find this basically the same broad divide. There are degrees that are hybrid. You know, they may fleet, fl uh, float about, but there are core degrees that are not. <coughs> uh, interestingly enough, uh, all these measures are fairly insensitive to, the, to how many graduates there are in each group. So you can find a stable proportion of engineers regardless of whether it's a group with 10% uh, of graduates or with 40% of graduates. So in other words, you say they are robust, these, these, these measures. So <coughs> the next question we ask is, is where, where does the affinity between the choice of discipline and the choice of radical politics come from? Hmm? That that's uh, has been the question. And I don't have time to, to go through the answer. The answer is mostly a conjecture, because we don't have measures of um, of character disposition of Islamists. But we did, we did as good as, as we could uh, using a triangulation, if you excuse me this horrible word, with, with the right wing. Because we know a lot about right wing and conservative character traits. And we use that. Uh, let me just tell you uh, one thing that is, which is interesting for thinking about this, namely, there is a group, which I didn't mention, which behaves like the inverse image of the engineers. Wherever you find the engineers, you don't find this group. Wherever you find this group, you don't find engineers. Any guess? Le donne. Women. Women behave the same, the, the, in the opposite way. So you find them on the left, not on the right, not among the Islamists. Uh, yeah, they, yes, this is the, the obvious doubt as well. There are women clamoring to, be, to join the right wing or join the Islamists, but they're kicked out, right? Uh, and uh, apparently it's not, it doesn't work that way. But um, anyway, we can go back to, to that. Let me, uh, we can... We can go back to the general questions uh, from where we started together and see whether we, we have uh, learned anything. <clears throat> it looks as if, uh, uh, although I didn't say by which traits, it looks as if the third question, does ideology sort which type joins which group? The answer is yes, it does. So not everybody ends up everywhere. So when you get very annoyed by something going on socially, you may flick one way or another. And this is evidence which piles up with uh, political psychology, but it's based on behavior and on uh, <coughs> um, on not on surveys, not on attitude surveys. Whether uh, people are, uh, are sometimes more susceptible than others, well, they are susceptible to, to the side they join, but we don't really have an answer to say whether there are people who are susceptible. There is some evidence we go on and on about, uh, about simplism being <coughs> one of the properties that may lead you to become an extremist. Simplism is the idea that you 
uh, you think that whatever explains the bad state of the world is a clear cut one cause, and whatever can alter the the world in the way in which you desire is one action, one strike, one blow, one. So that there is this simplification that uh, leads, leads people. Uh, and then on what condition drive people to extremism, we, at least for the first part of the Islamist insurgency, we can say safely that is not poverty even though there have been changes. Recently, if you look at the, the attackers are of a different caliber. We went from leaders to lumpen to loonies, right? We, um, we also know that it's not just a matter of network. It doesn't, it's not enough for you to be in the wrong place at the wrong time to become one of, uh, to become like that. Um, <clears throat> We also have a few pages on why social movement theory has limits. Social movement theory invokes uh, political entrepreneurship, uh, invokes the framing of political causes in a particular way to, to harness uh, the natural motivation of, of people. But that wouldn't explain why uh, you find that distribution of uh, degrees which is so clear cut from one side to the other. Um, we also have good evidence on uh, the fact that it's not selection. Hmm? It's not uh, that people go out and, and, and pick so. So these, these are the, <coughs> the thing we can, we can discuss. <coughs> 